He is the mayor of Rochester, and Ted Denton joins me in studio as we take a look at the state of the city in this address as we near the end of the calendar year. Good morning, Mayor. Well, good morning, Johnny, and thank you for having me in for the state of the city address. <clears throat> I am mayor for about six more weeks, and uh, one of the statutory requirements of the mayor, he has a handful of statutory requirements. You can't just go in and do what you want to do. And one of those requirements is that I report to the city every year as to the state of the city. And we've done that now. This would be, I've been in office eight years. This would be my ninth one. Uh, doesn't add up, does it? No. <laughs> the very first one I did was the previous mayor did not fulfill that last requirement. I see, I did not know that. Yes, yes. And uh, so as the new mayor, I was asked by uh, 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 the Kiwanis to come in and, and do that if I would. Well, I'd been in office about two weeks, so I came in and explained to them all. Uh, Wes was there, Dakota, I don't think you were there, but uh, Wes, I pretty much told them where the bathroom was, didn't I? That was about it. But it, it gave me a chance that first year to talk about the goals and objectives that we initially had in coming in. And, and I just wanted to say, it's been a great eight years. I've had a great board of works to work with. John Little, Rick Figlio, two long-standing businessmen in the community, a great clerk treasurer, Shada Beeler, wonderful superintendents and chiefs, and uh, we've, we've, we've honed a team. It just works very well. And that was the objective. Come in and bring some business principles. I came from the private sector, from the business world, where you worked with goals and objectives and management by objective and whiteboards and holding your people accountable to getting things done on a timely basis and it actually worked and as I said back then in that very first state of the city address I said uh, you get these bureaucrats who tell you it won't work you can't uh, govern uh, at City Hall like you uh, do in a private business that's code for gee I don't want anybody looking over my shoulder and uh, we were always very transparent in the private sector and we been very transparent in the municipal world. Now, sometimes to our detriment. Uh, yes, both Shot and I were looking for uh, another term, but in reality, and I said this during the campaign trail, uh, I was not a politician, ever. I never pandered for a vote in my life. If I couldn't do something or it couldn't be afforded, I didn't have any problem in telling someone. And, you know, I was told by one of my constituents told a couple things by this individual. I was told that uh, doing the right things in the municipal and the government world are not always the electable things. But we're pretty proud of the record we've had. Uh, we've been leaders, not cheerleaders. And this same person made the observation that that's when you get things done, when you got leaders and you don't go to a basketball game you want to watch the cheerleaders and the pep block and enjoy them, but by gosh, if those five leaders shooting the baskets don't show up on the floor, it's a pretty short game, and uh, you, don't, you don't come out with a win. So I, I'm, I'm pretty proud to say that Shot and I both have been leaders. We both have done the things to uh, get these 70-plus projects that we've done over eight years accomplished. Uh, I say 70 plus because we quit counting after the first quarter of this year. Uh, but uh, we came in and we had some real, real big challenges. The things that we took on, some of them were things that uh, we thought of that needed to be done, but it's surprising. A lot of these projects had already had previous studies completed from other administrations and uh, the studies set on the shelf because they were going to be tough. And uh, a lot of folks say, well, I don't know that we can get that done. We'll save it for another day, another administration, uh, another day. So we had, oh my gosh, we had half a dozen of those. Like the one that's going on right now, Apache Drive and Peace Tree down yes. at the south end of town. Oh my gosh, that was looked at when a fellow by the name of Pudge Egoff owned that area down there. And Pudge even went so far as to buy drainage pipe and sat down there for years. People may have seen it, big blue drainage pipe. And it sat there so long, it rotted and we couldn't use it when we went forth with this project. But we're talking over 
20, maybe 25 years ago, that was looked at down there as a possibility for advancing that area and just growing Rochester. And there were talks of a hotel and restaurants and stuff that would come along with that. Well, that was one of them. We dusted off a couple of years ago, started down that trail. And then when the Ready Grant program came along, uh, Paul Wyman, the president of the North Central Group, came to me and he said, Mayor, do you have any thoughts for a Ready Grant project? He said, I would dearly love for Fulton County to get some money. So I took him in and showed him the whiteboard and explained the Apache Drive Ride. He said, man, this looks great. So he got all of the local folks together, the county and the school, and then invited the public and met out at the, uh, the high school. And yeah, they all said, yeah, that looks like a worthwhile project for, for growing Rochester. We'll help the school. We'll help uh, that part of town. And yeah, let's get behind that. So as you probably know, the county and the city uh, you know, hooked up to uh, both put some money into the program and it ultimately ended up to a match situation where we got a million dollars from the Ready Grant folks. And it's being built right now as we speak. We've had our third project meeting since uh, the ribbon cutting a few weeks ago. My gosh, we had earth movers behind us after we moved from the ribbon cutting. Ready to move you. Yes, 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 HRP, the construction folks. And it just, it just is, is going like gangbusters down there. So uh, we're very, very happy about that. But again, that's nobody's original idea. That was on the shelf. Uh, Monroe Street a couple of years ago, the same construction folks are, uh, was on, were on that project as well. And uh, we took care of that in short order. That had been on the books for a while. Um, there were just, you know, uh, uh, things that we people knew we needed to get taken care of, but just didn't have the work for all to get it put together. And that's where it comes in. It's, it's really important to having these key positions, mayor, clerk, treasurer, board of works, or whatever. Some folks who are going to know what to do with it when the basketball is thrown to them. And uh, that's kind of where we've been. We've, uh, some of the 70 projects, uh, I just took a quick look at before I came over here. Uh, the 18th Street sidewalk was our very first project. We looked at that and for years people had said, you can't put a sidewalk on 18th Street. Too much infrastructure. Well, that was going to be the case if you put it on the south side, but if you went over on the north side, it was much easier. So we did that and we were able to do that. And oh my gosh, the people over there, the, the mothers who were pushing babies and carriages down the street, now on a sidewalk. The folks at the nursing home would like to go out and walk periodically. Now they're not in the street, they're on the sidewalk. So that turned out to be a real win-win. And uh, then it proceeded down the next one we jumped to. Uh, well, you know, you got to be able to cook more than one hamburger on the grill at a time. <laughs> so we had the uh, uh, Ninth and Main Street project in the works, and that had been sitting for five years, the hole and the blue tarp. And that's the other thing. Uh, you get a lot of people as you go along, you've been around for eight years and you're looking for four more. There are a lot of people who get in and vote who want to make a change who don't have any idea what Main Street looked like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the prettiest sight in the world. And, you know, you've got people like the reporter at the News Sentinel, he knows what it looked like <laughs> at that time. Yeah, so uh, we jumped in and got that project taken care of. $136,000 project and it was done with about $30,000 of redevelopment money and the rest came from private citizens. We went out and made the pitches too and they said, yeah, we got to get our gateway looking better. And they all got skin in the game. And then that, pers that, that was the one project that started to get the whole ball rolling to improve the downtown. The next thing was the parking lot behind Giretti's and lighting and paving and uh, stormwater and uh, then the rest of the parking lots in town, the city lots were redone and LED lighting and put in and then the project to put LED lighting throughout our community. You know, we got over 600 LED lights now. We're one of the few cities any size in Indiana that has all LED lighting and not only on our street lights and downtown, but in our parks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, uh, that was about five years ago, but the savings 
has paid for those cotton picking things over that period of time. It's amazing how much electric you save. Oh, I know. It's, I know at my home, let alone an entire city. It, it's crazy, you know? Uh, now, that was an original thought. That wasn't something that was on the book. RDP, Harry Webb, and I had talked about downtown lights for some time. And we initially, Harry would like to have seen some antique lighting. Well, we went into that, and it just wasn't feasible for us. We saved about 300000 doing the lights that we've got over the antique lights. And we were also able then to hit another uh, request that RD, RDP had for years, and that was speakers on those lights. And I think uh, WROI kind of appreciates that as well. Very and much we, so. Well, and we appreciate you guys being the uh, uh, the head for that equipment and everything, because that was a needed place too. And there were, by the way, there were talks of putting it in the chamber or the FEDCO building or whatever, but we wanted it someplace where we knew the people were going to be there and stable for a very, very long time. And it's worked out pretty well. So, you know, it's just, it was just one project begat another. And uh, while we were doing that, there's some of the bigger projects. We were doing uh, things uh, at our uh, waste treatment plant, the seven and a half million dollar project to upgrade our waste treatment plant. Got into a situation where, hey, there hadn't been anything done for over 30 years, 35 years. And uh, somebody a minute ago was talking about a toilet they were having trouble with. Well, guess what? The bigger toilet out at the waste treatment plant you can have trouble with, too, if you're not maintaining it. So we got into, into that, and that, that was a project, again, where I was the project manager. I'm the project manager for all these big projects. It stops right there with the mayor. And every two weeks, we'd have a sit-down construction meeting, like we're doing with Apache Drive, and we worked with the Gantt charts. Got a Gantt chart we work with for Apache Drive. And that's basically like in your home when you're making a checklist of the things that you have to do and how quickly you need to get them done. People work like that. We, we call it in the uh, industrial world, we call it a Gantt chart. And then you look at those at uh, every meeting and you see a comparison from the last one and you see where things have changed and you ask the questions. How come we missed time here? What's going on here? And you work out any problems. I call them Herbies. That was the Ellie Goldrat designation, mm -hmm. the father of quality control and process control. He called them Herbies. And uh, you work the Herbies out. And we've already had a couple of those on the Apache Drive project, even though it just started. So you get in, and that's how you keep it going. Government is slow enough without people watching these things and keeping feet to the fire. So that's how we've been able to do a lot of these things. Is it micromanaging? No. It's being engaged. You can go into the mayor's office and you can pretty much make that job anything you want. I went into it thinking, we got to get Rochester ready to move forward. You know, uh, we got to make sure that stormwater uh, is addressed. And we did start down that trail, although we ran out of some time and COVID hit us. We were going to redo a whole system on Main Street, which is the main artery, because we've had places on Main Street that get flooded whenever it would rain real hard. Well, that can be fixed, but it has to be dug up and larger lines put in. We haven't had any line attention on Main Street since there were horses on the street. Now, we are very fortunate that we have two separate systems. We have a storm sewer system and we have a waste system. Mm -hmm. A lot of cities don't. A lot of cities, they're combined. Well, now, IDEM has come forward and says you can't do that. you got to separate them. And uh, my friends over at Bluffton are going through that right now. Plus, they hadn't done anything to their waste treatment plant for 40 years either. Wow. It's costing them $60 million. Now, you know how big Bluffton is. That, yeah. That's tough. So you got to kind of be proactive. you got to be looking at this stuff. you got to be engaged. And uh, that's, that's how, uh, when the ball's thrown to you, you score a three-pointer. Uh, so, you know, we've gone through these things. We've had some uh, uh, smaller things, of course, along the way that have added up, like our uh, 600 AirVac pods 
that we have around the lake and all through the community where you couldn't put a gravity waste system in. We got 600 of those. And they've been in long enough now. You go back to when that was done at the, at the lake and that was decades ago. They've been in the ground long enough now that when we have winter uh, where it's cold and such, sometimes they malfunction. So uh, about three years ago, we started, it's on the whiteboard, we started uh, changing out the internal components of those things. They're kits that you can get to upgrade them and make them better. And Marcus uh, Halterman has about half of them completed throughout the community now. So you'll see the winter this, this year, and there'll be less of that. Uh, Derek, uh, <clears throat> uh, Derek Holloway, the uh, water treatment superintendent, uh, he's deep, deep, I should say, heavily, <laughs> heavily into uh, replacement of lead water lines. And uh, that has become uh, a big thing with Benton Harbor having a problem. That's become from Michigan a national storyline. National storyline going clear through the Midwest. And it's a good story. I mean, ages ago, I mean, when my father was in business 60 years ago as a, as a plumber in the community, there were lead lines around. Now, uh, we're in a program right now, we're getting some grant money, and we've got an uh, engineering firm working with Derek and, and, and the mayor, and we sit down, matter of fact, we've got a meeting coming up here uh, next week. We sit down, we're going to look at our inventory. We've asked people to take a survey, and we want to thank you all out there for completing that survey about your home, because we're not only talking about uh, the main tributaries, the main lines, which we believe are in pretty good shape, a lot of the problem are what we call the laterals, where, Johnny, your pipe you bring out and you stick onto ours. Yes. That's your pipe, but it may be lead. So uh, the, the government is saying, you've got to look at all of this stuff. So we're right into that. That's Derek's, uh, one of his big projects right now. Another project that he just got completed that uh, you would have never known until you were in it and start looking at things, were our three water towers and keeping the water rotating inside those towers. You know, they have chemicals and stuff in it that this water's been treated. Now we got great big blades in sight, all of, well, I think all of them but one, we got one left to do, okay. where there's a rotation going to keep all of that mixed up. And it's like making the lemonade and setting it in the refrigerator. If you don't stir it once in a while, all you're going to get is the water on the top. So we've got that going on to make things better, to provide better service to our people. Uh, we've done uh, several uh, upgrades to uh, our, our lines uh, because of things that weren't properly done in the past. So there's been a lot of infrastructure work. John Little made the comment the other day, he said, we've had more infrastructure improvements in work than in 40 years. Well, it's high time. You need to do that. Now, uh, is it all completed? No, no. Uh, I'm hoping the new administration, they've been in now, we've invited them in. Trent's been in four times, he's seen the project board, and I know he's got ideas and things he wants to do, and that's what a mayor does, but you can't forget the, the, the mechanisms that keep your city running. Uh, so, uh, you know, projects that we've, we've, we've left that are still on the board, um, it, we've got, uh, Still a uh, wastewater treatment plant issues that we're finishing up. Uh, the uh, the seven and a half million dollar project is completed, but we also started at that same time an insurance project that uh, is covering the, uh, the the pole building that had been built in the last administration that rotted and fell down on our digesters. And the digesters are two very large pits that are very important in the operation of the waste treatment plant, and they have a big rotating blade on each one of them that keeps rotating the mixture, well, in the wintertime they're exposed, in the wintertime they can freeze. So, oh my gosh, you're out there with a crowbar and whatever trying to keep those, those things running. Uh, the pole building was meant to keep them warm. Well, it's a high humidity situation. So you give it 10 years, it falls down. And uh, so now we've gone and we're putting uh, biodomes on them, which was something probably should have been done at the beginning. What's the old saying from Fram? You pay me now or you pay me later? Well, thank goodness we've had it completely insured. So it's an insurance job, but it's kind of slow. We're going to have uh, one of the two 
uh, completely refitted and running uh, in about a month. We're going to have it done just before the cold weather comes. And then we'll live along with the other one, which will still be exposed. And it'll be finished then in the spring. So it, it, it's all a process. And, and it's all sitting down and going through the steps. And again, like I said, there's so many players that are involved either in construction, engineering, and then locally, somebody has to sit there. There has to be a coach with a chalkboard and chalk, making sure that it, it all is all running uh, smoothly. So, uh, you know, we've got, uh, 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 I mentioned several other things here. We've got uh, uh, the new sidewalk program. We won a federal grant about uh, four years ago now. It was to, to start in 2023. And we've, we've already started about a $700,000 sidewalk project that's going to be in the uh, east and west side of Rochester down towards the uh, uh, north end, uh, redoing old sidewalks, putting in some new ones. But this is all a federally backed program that, uh, that we were able to get a grant for. So that has already started. We've had several trees taken out that have been the survey work done. It's all, so you're gonna see that being done. That's, that's in the hopper, so the new administration, I'm sure, will support that because that's, that's a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. Now, that creates all sorts of issues, though, for your clerk treasurer, who has to be able to shoot the ball when it's passed over to her. You start into the federal grant world, and that's a whole lot different than dealing with the state and having them come in and check your books once a year. Federal grants are pretty tough, and so now we've opened that door, and they're going to be living with the clerk treasurer for throughout the the project, which is good because that's that's our dollars, you know. So uh, you know we've got uh, several of, of those things still on the board, uh, and uh, it it just is it, it's just a, a continuation, you know. I I told Trent the other day, I said this mayor's job. It's basically day-to-day -day challenges and day-to-day -day problems if you're, if you're engaged in doing it properly. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm in it right till the last day. I've got uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks, we've got uh, uh, discussions. We've already opened up discussions for some uh, investors who, excuse me, are already interested in the Apache Drive area, uh, three of the hotel conglomerates we're talking to. We'd like to see a limited service hotel down there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's time. It's time, and with opening that up, and with what's happening out on 31, and uh, with Kokomo, with the battery plant and such, it's time. This is such a travel corridor. Yes, absolutely, and and we've known that, and we've we've looked and looked at it and thought about it, but this, this completing of Apache Drive just opens the door for it. So and we've got some people with some interest. So we're, 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 we're handling those discussions right now. There's the new Ready Grant 2 discussions going on right now for projects. And Paul Wyman, the president down there, he and I have, we've cultivated a relationship. And again, he would like to see some decent money going to Fulton County to help move Fulton County forward. Well, there are going to be some opportunities, and we just have to make sure that our county, city, FEDCO, anybody involved in the planning understands that uh, Rochester, in my opinion, is very soon, or we are right now, being offered a second bite of the apple. And what I mean by that is our first opportunity for a bite of the apple was years ago when the orthopedics group was being put together in Warsaw. There were vendors for those people that we should have been reaching out, and getting our ducks in a row and our places ready and saying, what do you need? What, what do you have to have? And we let that one get by us. Well, I believe we have a second bite of that apple right now and our city fathers, in my opinion, should take that and run with it. It's called vendors for the EV plants. Look at Rochester on the map. You got New Carlisle where one of the EV plants is being built right now. Yes. And you got Kokomo where two of them are going in right down there. We're right in the middle. With 31, 25, we're right 
there. So in my opinion, we have to strike while the iron's hot and not miss this bite at the apple. So uh, I'm believing that there's some things going on the Ready Grant wish list that uh, they're going to be looking at, and I hope that's certainly in the cards. Which, Mayor, it does say something for being prepared for those moments to come. You really can't work retroactively to be prepared for that. Oh, Johnny, that's so true. It's, you know, if you don't have anything to sell, you're wasting your time putting up the yard sale sign. You know, nobody's going to stop just to have a cup of coffee with you. <laughs> they want to take a look at what you're talking about. If you don't have a building, they certainly want to look at where you're talking. Uh, is, it, uh, uh, is it something that's going to take care of heartburn for them? Either logistics or uh, utilities or property taxes or labor. Labor's a big one. Uh, uh, that, that, that's the kind of stuff they, they look for. Right now, and I've had these discussions with Paul Wyman, right now, down there at Kokomo, they're running around all over the place looking for any place close that has a 100,000 square foot building. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of building or whatever, they will make it work, fix it up, some of these vendors. Does that mean Rochester has a potential of ending up with 2,000 uh, workers in, a, in for the EV? For, no, but we might end up with five or six hundred with two or three uh, vendors. It's time to make that a high priority, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm the guy walking out the door, so that and a buck and a half will get you a cup <laughs> of coffee. Uh, that's, that's kind of where we've been, what we've done. Our goal uh, for the eight years, I said the first year coming in, there was so much work to do and we were in such a position, and I went down to the mayor's meeting and I was told how important it was to maintain, uh, create a certain image for the mayor and his staff and such, so that whenever there were any stories told uh, about your town and they talked about you, you, you need to remember they would always end those stories not with your name, they'd end them with Mayor of Rochester. So you had a level of respectability you had to keep and maintain. And also, uh, the, uh, the eight-year goal, or the first-year goal going into office was, if anybody came up to you when you were traveling, and they asked you the two questions that are always asked, what's your name? And the second one, where are you from? You didn't have to lower your head and say Rochester, Indiana. That was a big goal, first and foremost. I believe Shada, John Little, Rick Figlio, the superintendents, the chiefs, and Mayor Denton have achieved that goal. Ah, now, Johnny, we did this uh, this way this time because we did it during the COVID time. We did it on the yes. radio. And uh, uh, I wanted to do it again because I am the outgoing guy, so any questions and answers would be like uh, like the Ray Grant thing would be purely, purely my opinion. You know, you can ask me a lot of things, and it's, okay. now it's going to be opinion. It isn't going to be based on what uh, our goals and objectives are. You have anything to ask? As best you can, gauge to me now that we're more or less over, and your administration's coming to an end as well. Gauge for me the impact that COVID had on your administration. Oh, it uh, definitely had a significant impact. Uh, that 70 figure would have been 100 mm -hmm. uh, or uh, and over. Uh, yeah, we, we, we shelved one of the major projects we went out for bids on, which was the Main Street project. We had uh, 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 an NDOT grant, a community crossing grant for a million dollars to redo the stormwater system and upgrade Main Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, that was going to let us get it done and then we'd have that big chunk of the of the water issue taken care of, their stormwater issue. Well, we went out for bids and you start with an engineering estimate on what the project's going to cost and then plan from there. And we went out for bids. It came back at twice the engineering estimate during COVID. Oh my gosh. Well, 
two things can happen at that point. Your bureaucrats can sit there and say, okay, well, let's just go ahead and do it. We'll see where the money can come from. We'll find it. We'll have to dig and do this or bond this or whatever. And that's another thing about this administration and having shot in, in the seat she was in. We worked so great together because we both thought like we were in the private sector. And if you don't have the money, don't go do it unless the whole town is falling down at your feet. So we took a look at it and said, oh my gosh, this COVID thing's got to change. It's got to get better. So we shelved it. And we were going to start down that trail again this next year. And I would encourage the new administration to go take a look at that again. Because I do believe things have changed dramatically in that construction world relative to pricing. So the, yeah, it did affect us. Uh, you know, we got some COVID money. Uh, we threw 50000 of that COVID money at the health department. Mm -hmm. God love them. They did a tremendous job getting shots to everybody and going through the process. And we had the COVID uh, task force meeting them by telephone every, every week. And uh, everybody came together. And uh, Jana Vance, man, she did a super job with meals through that period of time. And uh, in our health department, uh, you know, everybody working there like like uh, like yeoman, and and we got through it in pretty good shape. But uh, it did affect us. It slowed us down considerably. When you have, and not all of those were planned projects we've talked about, or even show. Sometimes things present themselves before you're ready for them to do so. Talk about adjusting on the fly when a project infrastructure comes up and you know it's got to happen now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's called flexibility. And uh, again, I mentioned the whiteboards. You guys have heard me talk about whiteboards, so you're probably fed up about it. <laughs> but it, it, it is a great tool. It's an old time tool. Uh, and I don't care if it's a whiteboard or if it's your iPad or whatever. But uh, the whiteboard allowed us to establish a room where anybody involved with the projects whether it was our, our superintendents, uh, construction people, our engineering people, grant people, it could all come to that room and take a look at the board and we keep it updated. It's one of the first things you showed me when I visited you at City Hall. Yeah, yeah, and, and whenever anybody comes see me, one of the things they wanted to look at was our project room. And it had been quite active. We, we, we worked pretty heavily out of it. But, you know, you're gonna have a meeting on Thursday to talk about the project, uh, at hand it's on the board right now but you get a call Monday and then something has changed dramatically we can't wait till Thursday for that meeting you think you got to react right then and there so you get uh, you get folks together if if it's possible and get things done of course you you do have the latitude to take care of an emergency situation but uh, yeah we've had some of that one of the things we did in the very first year <laughs> you go into some of these things and uh, sometimes even when it's a non-union environment, the people working in it believe it's a union environment and their little little piece of it, they only take care of it. The rest of it, you know, they take care of their own. And we scrapped to that. And that was uh, very evident when we had the first wind shear issue. Mm -hmm. Brought all the superintendents in, the two chiefs, the clerk treasurer. And we got around the table and said, look, Here's what the city is. It's, it's a mess. Uh, we need everybody's support. Marcus, you've got equipment that can move trees. You're going to be working with border. You're going to get those, you know, we're going to get them moved out. Tom, you've got stuff that can do things, chainsaws, whatever. You guys are going to be working with the Holloway and getting the water situation. And then you, then you have a whole new set of meetings. You have the daily updates on the emergency process. And uh, at that time, there wasn't a real heavy presence. This is the first one about four or five years ago from the county as far as the emergency management uh, direction. And, and that's when you find out, okay, you can sit around on your thumb and wait for somebody to come and give you direction, or you can go get it done. And so that's what we did. And we did away with all of that. Well, gee, I'm the water department. Well, now, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm the fire department. 
what do we need to do, Mayor? All of our shirts start out by saying City of Rochester, and then it says the department. So first, it's City of Rochester. So we, we got that, and I'm so proud to say these folks, they just work like that now. So, you know, that's kind of how you handle those things. You can't just say, gee, I gotta wait, you know, I gotta, because people's day-to-day -day lives depend on your reacting. You gotta be flexible. You gotta react. You gotta know when to move forward. You, you really, you know, I would say to the new administration, uh, you gotta have the courage to lead, number one. You gotta have a plan. If you're not planning for success, what do they say, guys? You are automatically planning for failure. You're planning, all right. But if you don't have a plan for success, it will be a failure is what you're planning. And then you've got to work, uh, when you're in a municipal position like the mayor, then you have to work with uh, the, ru the rule of three. You ever hear the rule of three? I have. Yeah. And the rule of three in the municipal world is you have to know what you can do, you have to know what you can't do, and then you have to know what you should do. That's the rule of three. And it certainly helps to have a clerk treasurer behind you who says, well, you might want to think about that. I think you're, you're, you're pushing the statutory requirement, or I think you're pushing the budget situation on money. You know, we've always, speaking of the clerk treasurer, you know, she got beat by 15 votes just the other night, which, uh, uh, I don't know, she just has done a, a remarkable job. We wouldn't have been able to do all this stuff without a strong clerk treasurer. And that was one thing we did the first year, too. She and I sat down, we had photo ops where it came out and said, uh, Democrat and Republican bury their differences and they're moving forward for the good of Rochester, which we did. Uh, we never talked red or blue after that. But uh, she's always operated that budget on a statutory basis, but then you're allowed some flexibility to establish procedures, okay? And so many clerk treasurers out there don't have a clue on what is a good procedural process. But in Shada's world, and coming from the private sector, you know, she worked at one time for Culver Military Academy, mm -hmm. and she worked for the hospital. So she was a great one to sit down and we could compare notes from the private sector. But her, her procedure in that budgetary world was all of these little pockets, line item areas that have money, you never let them get below 20%. Kind of like running your house. You want to keep your savings account at a certain spot. You want to keep the checking account at a certain spot. It's got to be your goal. If you can do that, you don't ever have to worry about falling into the red. And then you, you have that savings account over here called uh, the uh, uh, emergency fund, your rainy day fund. And so that's always kept at a certain level to help those, with those things you talk about that are unexpected. And she's been great at making sure all of that was in balance. I said a long time ago, I said, I'm a great idea guy, I'm a great project guy, I'm a great marketing guy, but I've always had a good CFO to hold me by the coattails and keep me from running off the cliff. So, and that's been shot at. So we've had, a, we've had a really, really great run like that. I'm very proud of all these people. And somebody asked me, they said, if you had to go back, you know, eight years ago and do anything differently, you know, you got beat pretty bad. Well, again, I'm not standing there cheerleading. I've never been a very good politician who would pander for a vote, but I get things done. I win the ball game, you know? And uh, would I do anything different? Not on your life. So that's, that's pretty much how I can wrap this up today, Johnny. Can I leave you with one personal question? More, sure. More of a state of Ted Denton other than the state of the city. Yeah, it's, it, it's a 46 regular. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too. So what is next for Ted Denton? Well, you know, I've, I've reached out to some of the folks in the private sector, and I'd really like to do something locally. Uh, it's kind of tough locally because, I mean, 
do you have supporters and people behind you locally? Yeah, you've got some of that, but you've also got people going, you know, I didn't even get my leaves picked up on Monday, and I had to wait till Thursday. I wouldn't vote for that as, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or he wouldn't let me have a golf cart. I don't want that. Kid. You know, <laughs> so you've always got some of that. You're you're brushing up against. It. But you know, number one, none of us, and I'm so proud of this. None of us at City Hall. And I'm talking about the boards. I'm talking about the Board of Works. I'm talking about the clerk treasurer, I'm talking about the superintendents and the chiefs and the mayor. None of us ever did anything where we weren't doing it for the good of Rochester. We've all had a heart in the community. I said all along, I said to you on, on uh, the debate night, I wouldn't want to be mayor anywhere else. This was my hometown. This was making a difference. This was raising the bar. This was somebody being able to say, yes, I'm from Rochester, Indiana, and be proud of it. You know, that's, that's what this whole thing was about. So, you know, privately, it, or in the private sector, it's a little bit tough unless I want to relocate and move. And I have had some offers of that, but I'm still kind of, I want to do that. Uh, there have been uh, some folks, you know, we're going to have over 40 new mayors in the state. Wow. And at least that many clerk treasures. So the uh, you know the possibilities of consulting already had some people that have reached out to me and we talked a little bit. You can't do seventy some projects and not have people notice. You know, in the municipal world. Uh, same with Shada. You know, I mean, she's got a whole bunch of talents that are marketable. Mm -hmm. So you know, I can't speak directly for her right now. We've kind of kicked things around a little bit, but. Consulting is always an option. Okay. So you'll see us around someplace, I'm sure. Uh, she may still be here in the community. Uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, we have our plans. We, we've completed our mission. I believe, well, I've completed my mission. Time to turn it over to somebody else. We've raised that bar. We're just encouraging the people coming forward. Keep it there, move it higher, if you will. Mayor Ted Denton, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny, and thank you to WROI. Thank you to the Wes over at the Sentinel. Thank you to CODA at RTC. You folks have been nothing but genuine, fair, and very good reporters over this past eight years. I certainly appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Mayor Ted Denton with us on WROI. Johnny McCurry, WROI News. Rochester Mayor Ted Denton with us in studio for this segment of the news with a special presentation. Mayor. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, years past, I, I think you all have been aware, going back the eight years of, of this administration, uh, we'd always uh, have every year the choice, usually I'd do it at the end of the State of the City Address, and uh, it uh, is a citizen of the year, uh, somebody that maybe hasn't had a lot of attention in our community, uh, acknowledgments for too many things, but they've done yeoman's work in the area of service. And uh, I've got a Citizen of the Year for the last time. This individual receives a plaque, and then their name is on a plaque at uh, the City Hall at the Chamber that stays on the wall there, uh, we hope forever. So this would be the eighth name on that plaque. I'm presenting it today like this because this individual is, uh, they're sequestered right now with COVID. So when you asked me a while ago what COVID has done for us, it's still coming at us. So this individual is home listening and uh, I want to congratulate him. We'll present the uh, plaque to him at City Hall tomorrow. I think he comes out of uh, quarantine tomorrow. But I wanted to announce today that the Mayor's Citizen of the Year for 2023 is Mr. Jimmy Tyler. And uh, Jimmy is uh, my choice for 2023 Citizen of the Year for his devotion and decades of service to the Rochester community, starting with his working as a young man at Tyler's sheet metal business with his father and siblings, a family-owned business that was respected in the city for a number of years He's installing furnaces and doing sheet metal work. 
Jimmy went on to raise a family and work in his own trucking business partnership for a number of years. He is a veteran who served in the National Guard, fulfilling an obligation and devotion to his country. He is noted for his decades of service as a restaurateur, owner, and operator of the original Evergreen Restaurant, where everyone went for the best homemade pies and the greatest tenderloin sandwich in the state. He's also known for his many years of service to the local Eagles Lodge, serving in a leadership capacity for most of his years of participation. He is known by this mayor and previous mayors for serving on the City of Rochester Water Board, making decisions that have resulted in a well-run and maintained utility. Finally, he is recognized as an all-around good citizen, an inspiration to all, young and old alike. It's my distinct pleasure to present Citizen of the Year for 2023 to Mr. Jimmy Tyler. Well done and congratulations. Absolutely, and tomorrow we'll put this plaque in his hands, and like I said, his name will be on the wall forever. Now, he's probably had his name on the wall other places, but this is <laughs> going to be an honor, Jimmy. <laughs> Get well soon. Mayor Denton, thank you. Thank you. More coming up on WROI. We'll take a look at sports coming up. <laughs>